traumatizing events are the ones you don't wish to go back to. Traumatizing events are the ones that disturb you. Traumatizing events are the ones you actually sometimes need to therapy yourself into. So let's take this as a therapy. Because I'm traumatized. Get my head straight, get it cleared out. And I honestly do not want to go back. Because I can traumatize myself out of everything. So there is a joke. I thought it was a joke. There's a, there's a nigger. He's tall, really pretty nigger. And he's walking. He's got the gold chain around his neck. And he walks and so proudly. And he's got the tumbao, which is he got the beat, he got the rap in his walk. And on his shoulder, he's got a parrot, beautiful parrot. I mean, all the colors you can possibly imagine. So he walks very proud, the nigger with his parrot. And the dude from the other side of the street calls him. Hey, where did you get that one from? And he answers, In Africa! In Africa! So that was the reception after 13 and a half hours of amazing heartache, amazing hardship. I could barely walk. I didn't slander it. I didn't, pride, how do you say, pride myself in walking in. No, I could barely drag my feet forward. But all them niggas standing there. I don't know, I just saw black. I just saw black, 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 black. How many? How many dudes? Black, 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 sitting and standing in the entrance of that place. Anything helping me out? So I had to fall, almost fall on the floor to ask for a chair. And anyone, they're just standing there and watching me. They're watching me like I'm the parrot. Well, them niggas, right? Outrageous. If you wish to go to a place like that, well, it's up to you, but I think it's a bad choice. Because you don't get what you need in the hospital. What you need is care. You don't get care in the hospital. They absolvieren you. How you say this? Absolvieren. They shuffle you off through. Through whatever the procedures are. Usually. And then there's a few aspects. You go branch out like a clock. What time? One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. There is the ego. That's like the largest part of it. Ego. Each one has their own ego. Two, there is the hierarchy. And there's the boss and there's the subtitles. And you see the tension. You feel the tension. So each one has a little bit of a higher position than the other. So there is tension. So you are sitting there, I mean, in an emergency room, in an emergency room, in an emergency room. I could barely talk. And everyone needs to ask me the same question. Seven times the same question. New one comes in, ask me the same questions. Other one is in the room, ask me the same questions. I can barely tell how many times. Number three, I'm in a crossfire there. What is it? Is it a judge? Is it a law? Am I in a, in a courtroom? Or in a, am I in a police station? To be cross-examined? See if I tell the truth? What the fuck? They make me feel like a delinquent to begin with. Zero, con clock number four. Zero consideration. There's no humanitarianism. Nothing going on. It's all about them egos. And the passive aggression they already have in hands within themselves. Because all they ever do, clock number five, is fight against each other. Loudly or passively. Clock number six. The lowest end is often the nicest one, if he chooses to. So I got the guy who sounded like a gay person. But he didn't look like a gay person. He looked more like a, like a Gandhi, like an Indian guru. No, not a guru. Like someone who has insight, like Hari Krishna Murti, that type. A good person, not, not some asshole. Someone who actually took a moment to actually tap into the field that there is a person and the person has also more than a limp and a body and a medical history to be examined or actually ignored. And that was like the only worthwhile in the whole night I was there. For just a moment. And it's very interesting to think at the moment I thought, well, I considered, well, he's gay and very pretty. Uh, I remember how I look at people, right? I look at people from their shine. And he was not submissive to a fact. I mean, a lesbian, overweight, the typical lesbian, you know, who bumps everyone away, who is masculine. Nah, she's just loud and she's ugly, overweight and mean. And stands there like she's the boss. 
on the other hand, she feels like she's crumbling, but no one can see that because she's got the, you know, the overhand because she's the one who dictates everyone around. And she stands there. And it doesn't matter if the patient is freezing cold. She doesn't go and, and grab a blanket. No. She's the boss. Why would she make her hands dirty? See, and that's why we differ. Because I would give you the blanket. I don't need to mistreat you to validate myself like they do. So here's the gay dude, and he was so nice and almost shy, and I don't think that was staged. Committing his duty to say, bless you. But also his personal idea, bless you. But then again, he wasn't really feeling it with the lesbian. But then again, he is correct, like I am. And we sometimes do things because they are the right things to do. And then again, he was afraid of her because she's a freaking Nazi, fascist. And at the end, she lied to me straight in the face. Enhancing herself now as she wanted to have a dependent on herself by lying to me and inventing some kind of illness, which of course she covered herself legally by never saying a complete phrase, by never exactly saying a complete phrase. Like illness or bad or blah, 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 not explaining anything. Yeah, wrong. So when you pin it down in the code of law, there's not one phrase you can actually hang on to her because she doesn't have it. That's the mean fuckers there. Did you got a teeth palette? No, how do you call this? Did you get a biting brace? Did you got a biting plate? Shit, you don't get a biting plate? Oh my God, you're so out of tune. You're not fashionable. I don't think you can attend our meetings anymore. You need a biting plate. Oh yeah, that was one dentist. And the other one, I was in San Francisco. And the other one, Oh, okay, so there is an issue with one tooth. Okay, great. Don't you worry. We help you. So first and foremost, and then he makes a list, all the stuff I had to go through just for attending one tooth. We have to examine all your teeth, which is, I don't know, 36. And then we have to look at all your history. I got dizzy. I had to throw up on it because you don't have health insurance, do you now? It's all money in their pockets, money out of yours. And what for again? Tell me again. Now, when you live in the negativity and you need that thing, like cello, oh, I got my, you know, and you get the pill for it, so you don't have a husband, you don't have a boyfriend, and you don't have a dick, and especially you don't have werewolves, then you need a pill or something outside. My relationship. So if you go there, then you're grateful that a lesbian dyke comes to you in brutal manners and gives you another thing to lament yourself about. Now you can go to the doctor, at least you have a relationship with the doctor. How many old ladies fuck their doctors in their head? Ah, 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 dog. <laughs> so traumatizing but let's go back to the beginning so here i am and how many people did came in the room fortunately it was a large room oh i felt honored yeah cherished princess got a large room this time yeah five people at least maybe six in and out and everyone but i'm just gonna call him the little saint how did you look slim very clean. I mean, someone who could... Okay, so when you have a shower and you put on your clothing, it's not only that you have a shower. It's also that you take charge and care of your body, that it's okay, that it's nice, there's something spiritual about it. That's how he looked. She's just overweight and fascist. They can shower all they want. They always look filthy to me. They have a filthy mind. They have a filthy thing. And that filthy thing they use for filthy things. Disgusting. And all to overpower someone else. Whereas a beautiful person never wants to overpower anybody. It's against our, our nature. So everyone seemed not to know exactly. Besides he, I'm calling the saint. Oh, black, I guess. Was he black or was he like Hindu? I don't know. But something like that. Some mocha kind of. Or was he, I don't know. Something like that. Hard to see. Yeah, he took his mask off for just a moment to look at his face. I think he had a little bit of a mustache coming along, maybe a little grayish. Oh, he was almost bald and he reminded me of someone I met once, a doctor I met in San Francisco, who was really, really nice too. Imagine, uh, he reminded me not only because of the physical, but also because of the vibration. And that means a lot. A doctor who was so considered and so amazing. He was like... It was like a mixture of black and white, that type of black. But of course, it's more black than white. But it's not the it's not the black with the li the thick lips. You know, not not the vulgar black. It's a different. It's a, it's a more like Obama black. <laughs> yeah, a elegant one. 
But you actually forget that it's a black thing because <laughs> it's just not there anymore. Because it doesn't matter. I literally do not understand that black when I look at it. And you have to remind me to look at that because I look at other things. I look at the light. I look at the intent. I look at the purpose. I look at sometimes the intelligence when it's requested and required. Because it's, it's nice, but it's not always the most important part. It's just making that sure and clear. And all the rest, I didn't really know what they were doing. At least that's what they showed. I mean, I am vulnerable. Now, they stick my body on the one side. They clam my body all over with other, other things, which, of course, I have experienced. But if you don't have experienced, a blang and bang and boom on your... I mean, it's your body. It's your life. If you, even if you have down, no brain and no heart, that's all you ever got. And now it comes a bunch of people and you're supposed to feel soothed. And see how I speak, I'm outraged. You're supposed to feel safe. And I didn't. And then I look at, and then, oh, oh, where is this again? And where does this go? Oh my God, am I going to die now? How often did I feel that way? And then the extent, like she didn't know where to put in. I asked her if she was an intern because she looked like she had no clue. And she talked like she had no clue. But was that to provoke me? Or was it just the way she is? Yeah, many agents, all negative, all negative, all negative, all negative. They have both. They have the submission. They have the I don't feel well. Oh, actually, three things. And then they have the thing, I have to overpower you. Because that's what they all want. They all want, besides, I'm not, I'm going to exclude my little saint on the side. I'm not going to talk about him anymore. So when I say all, I mean all the others. They all want to overpower now the patient because now they got some power in their life going there, know something, and the patient doesn't. They stand up and you lay flat. You depend on them. And that pushes them up like they think they're cool. And they're all ugly. All fake hair colors, all fake... Ugh. There is no care. That's the issue. No care. There's no will. There's no wish. There's no nothing. It's horrible. It's traumatizing. Just even I, I pushed so hard not to go there. I did not want to. I was pushed to go there. Abuse is what they do. They're all abused. And even the smallest end on one abuses and takes, takes me for her dummy. And of course, you can't say it because then I say, oh, I was just explaining it to you. Yeah, if you explain something five times, which already had been responded, then you take a person for a dummy or you just show how much a dummy you are. And that's what they did. They're all condescending. So in their vision, it's like, that's like the language of care. No, it's not. It's condescending. So just because I need help, now I'm an asshole. No wonder no one wants to ask. It's horrible. And then they gave me the medicine, which they have been doing before. Now this excessive explaining made me feel like she doesn't know what, it, what, what she was doing. Excessive explaining, excessive explaining, excessive explaining. Of course, if you point it down to them, they're going to say, well, we're just informing you, we're committing our duty. Now, I have been in the hospital for like, how many, 35 times for that in my life? I've never had such a negative treatment about the medicine particularly. It makes me feel that I'm not safe. And so I thought, oh my God, are they going to give me too much? Am I going to die now? Or are they going to give me too little and extend the procedure? I had never doubted before, but why did I have the doubt? What did they show and exposed? They think they can play with people's lives and they think that's okay. Even from their little perspective and their standpoint where they have no hearts and they really have no brains because reproducing information you read in a book, that's not really having a brain. And in our perspective, it's completely different. And I thought about, I'm always, see, I'm super vulnerable and I'm silent, I'm quiet. And every, anybody would, would, would react to that. I, I am not. You see me in like nothing happens. Because I um, I have a healthy mind. I don't I, I don't engage in that drama. But I'm exposed. I'm in pain. There is no space for improvement when there is no goodwill, and there is no goodwill. And perhaps some haven't really seen that yet. How much they lose their job. How much they lose the clients or patients. How much they lose the environment, which is probably very ugly. I, I, I have seen a few nice hospitals in Mexico. A few of them. They're not that ugly. There's a way to do stuff. But welcome when you feel loved. Any hardship can be easily overcome. And as a person, I demand to be loved 
from other people who want to serve as pers- people. You must love people. Of course, it's hard to love those who are ugly to you. So it is, it is the point. I have to rephrase. I thought about a few items earlier. It is the point to... See, this is not about you learning how to meditate and you got yourself out of, of horrible circumstances. That's not what this is about. Not in my world. It's about not having horrible circumstances to begin with. So those people shouldn't be in their jobs, which they are, because they don't want to. They want to glorify themselves and think they're doing good for others. They want to be applauded, and then they call that, oh, my, my duty to civilization and humanity, or some bullshit, which is not if it's against the people they actually treat. So sticking an intravenal into your body is not the same when it comes from one end or the other. It's just like a dig. Sticking a dick into your body is not the same when it comes with love and peace and agreement and, and mutual reconnaissance or freaking rape. Yeah, and then I went out and uh, again, I mean, they don't think. Of course they don't think because it's not in the rule book. Who tells them that someone who is half of the 24 hours a day ill and ends up in an emergency room and, sits and has to be there for hours and also is advised to stay with the lie, to be admitted, and then not even consider to offer a water or some food or something? Because it didn't use did that usual, you know, we're going to hydrate you now, girl. Which I usually do. They put something in, hydrate you. Didn't do it. Not a glass, nothing. And then she makes me again and again and again and listen to the same dumb words. And then she wants me to stay in the hallway in the early morning after all the trauma I have received. And she knows. Not even a chair. Sit down again. I get it for you. Couldn't she have done that before? Okay, never mind. She didn't. I'm going to get you a chair. No. It's like I don't exist. That's the point. I do not exist for them. I'm just a little figure for them to glorify themselves. Look at me. I'm cool out.